Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Five. I'm Pastor Steve, and my goal today is to help get your day off to a great start. The way we do that is by spending a little time together in the Word of God and in prayer. And so, every morning, I invite you to spend some time with me reading through the Bible. And so, every day, we try to read at least one chapter of Scripture together. And we have now, for a number of weeks, been working our, th our way through the Gospel of Matthew. And today, we come to the second half of Matthew chapter 26. Yesterday, we read the first half of the chapter. It's a very long chapter. And so today, I'm going to invite us to pick up at verse 47 and read all the way to the end. I think it's verse 75. So I hope that when we're done, you'll take the time to read the whole of that second half of this chapter. Uh, but for the purpose of our lesson, we're going to look at just one portion of that. We'll be looking at verses 47 through 54. So, if you want to grab your Bible, or pull it up on your phone, I invite you to join me in Matthew chapter 26, beginning in verse 47. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you came here for, friend. Then the man stepped forward and seized Jesus and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you not think that I could not call on my father? And he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? In that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Well, I often try to picture this scene in the garden. Jesus, just before this, has been praying to his Father. He is preparing himself mentally and spiritually for what is about to transpire. He knows that his betrayal is imminent and the cross will soon be behind it. The disciples exhausted from all that has happened, fall asleep in the garden as Jesus prays. And then Jesus awakens them, probably at this point actually, for the third time. Immediately Judas arrives with a large crowd armed with clubs and swords sent from the chief priests and the religious leaders. Can you picture it? It's dark. Torches dimly light the garden. There are shouts, chaos. Judas betrays Jesus with a kiss. They approach Jesus to arrest him. Peter draws his sword and swings it wildly, cutting off the ear of the servant of the chief priests. Can you see it? In your mind, the chaos, the smoke, the dim light, the noise of the crowd. No wonder Peter is overwhelmed and does the only thing he can think to do. But then notice what happens. Into all the confusion, Jesus brings peace. Peter, he says, put away your sword do you really think I wasn't prepared for this? Do you think this took me by surprise? 
And then he reminds them. He says, I could have called upon my father and he would have sent me a dozen legions of angels. Do you know what a legion is? A legion was a unit of soldiers, usually numbering around 6,000. Jesus could have called on tens of thousands of angels to fight his battle and to see him freed. Peter is panicked. But Jesus has it all under control. It is what had to happen. But Jesus had all the power in the world to change it if he had chosen. And he had this situation well under control. Sometimes in life, it feels like everything is spiraling out of control. We sometimes feel overwhelmed even to the point of panic. But in those moments, remember that God is bigger than any problem, any obstacle, any challenge, any chaos that we might face. And He has it all under control. When life is chaotic, we do not have to be fearful or anxious. We just need to give it over to God. He's got this. This situation didn't take him by surprise. He's not wringing his hands, uncertain what to do next. He is already at work in ways we probably can't even see yet. So give it to God and trust Him. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, in this story, as Jesus faces his betrayer in Judas, and as he is arrested, and as Peter draws his sword, and as the chaos ensues, we are reminded that sometimes in our own lives, we have moments that feel crazy and chaotic and out of control. But help us to remember, let us be reminded by this story, that even when it seems outwardly that things are not under control, that things are spiraling and, and getting worse, help us to remember that in the background, often in unseen ways, you are working for our good and you are bringing about the best for us. And so help us, Lord, in those difficult moments to remember that and to trust you and allow you to reach in as only you can. I thank you and I praise you for this wonderful gift. In Jesus' holy name, amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day, and I will see you on Monday.